Happy New Year from the Eye on Life podcast. I am your host, Brian Boyer, first show of 2021, and I'm doing it solo today. In fact, in just a few minutes, I will be uh, announcing my first guest next week, which I'm really excited about. Uh, a lot of you who watch the show or listen to the show know that we talk about pet peeves quite a bit. We go on some rants. We, uh, we observe life. And uh, the first guest is going to be awesome. Uh, it's, it's a great pet peeve. It's one that I have. I'm going to announce in just a few minutes. So I hope you'll stick with me. Uh, before we get started here, I want to, uh, I want to thank all of you uh, who, are, who have watched the show, supported the show, listened to the show. Um, I want to thank the guests who have been on the show. You know, when I, when I started this podcast, uh, I, really, I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, but I've learned a lot about myself. We've had some great content. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, as I've said in many shows before, uh, if you have show ideas, show guests uh, that you'd like to see on the show, please, you know, email me, Brian at ionlifepodcast.com. Uh, I will, uh, I will respond to your emails. I uh, would love to get some dialogue going even during the week uh, in between shows. That's really what it's supposed to be all about. So um, I've learned, uh, I've learned several things about the podcast as well. I want to express those so people get a little bit of context. Uh, you know, when I first started, I had this big ambition of thousands and hundreds of thousands of listeners. And as I've kind of gotten into this a little bit more, it's become a little bit more realistic that it's more about hundreds. Um, although we did reach over a thousand downloads a few weeks ago. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but really, the, the podcast and, and, and being on, on the boards on Facebook and social media, uh, it's, it's really it's good therapy uh, because you really do hear from a lot of different people. And the key to a solid podcast is first off the sticking to it and the perseverance and we're on show 19 right now uh, and I'm really proud of that and again that's because of you that's not because of me that's because of the people who listen and the guests that we have and we've had phenomenal content um, and that's another key to a successful podcast that I've learned just really really great content and the guests that we've had have been fantastic so I want to thank all of them we'll, we'll, I'm hoping to actually have some repeat uh, some repeat guests on uh, guests that we've had on before, we get an update uh, from them to see how they're doing. So we're definitely going to be doing that. Um, and there are a few, several other topics that we're going to cover, and I'm going to get to that in just a second as well. But again, first off, I want to wish everyone a happy new year. I want to thank everyone for for listening to the show, watching the show, share it, like it. Um, it, it. This is really about reaching as many people as we can because we are extremely happy with the content that we've provided, and now we just need to reach people to hear it. So I uh, appreciate all your support on that. I want to also thank uh, a special thank you to Chris Bossert and Monica Perez Bossert, as everyone knows at the beginning of each show, I recognize our show sponsor, Must NY, and it's mustny.com. Uh, they do COVID masks, they make them, they customize them, and I can't say how much I appreciate the, uh, the leap of faith that they took by sponsoring the show, and I hope that we're driving some traffic to their website and driving some, some sales for them. They're a small business, they're located out in Western New York. A uh, special shout out to... Uh, Buffalo uh, and Fredonia and all of Western New York. I know you guys are going crazy out there right now with the bills. Uh, so I want to thank Chris and Monica for, for their support uh, in 2020, heading into 2021 here as well. So I really uh, appreciate that. And uh, if anybody has any uh, other ideas for sponsorships or are interested yourself, please let me know. I would love to get you on the show. It can be uh, this back wall here that's been bare. We're going to start to populate that with some things. So maybe there's some sponsorship opportunities there. Let me know. I'd love to be able to help you out as much as possible. So going back to the COVID masks, you know, we've, uh, we've obviously advertised and, spo uh, advertised and sponsored uh, mustny.com uh, on every show. And, you know, there's a lot of reflection, I think, as we get to the end of one year and into the new year, uh, and maybe, maybe even more so this year than ever before. And I, I mentioned this in my social, one of my social media posts last week. So for those of you who saw that, this might be a little redundant, but a lot of people are saying that they cannot wait to get out of 2020, that they have been waiting for it to end, and that they just want to forget about it. And I, I understand that. And before I kind of get to why I don't want to forget 2020, let me, let me just first say that a lot of the items that we talk about, the topics that we talk about in the show, we, I understand we try to keep it pretty light. We've had some serious shows, and we're going to have some more serious shows. But ultimately, it's, it's really the show is really an observation uh, on, on life. And, you know, you've heard me talk about my, uh, you know, some of my, my pet peeves that I have. We talked about the lack of live music. We've talked about the lack of people at sporting events and how that some of the things that we 
uh, enjoy in our daily lives um, have affected us, and and that's okay. And, and I think that even even when, even with perspective, it's okay that those things have maybe gotten us down a little bit, maybe stressed us out a little bit, maybe given us some anxiety. Uh, so it, it's okay that you know that you feel that way, even though some of these things might be trivial compared to some of the things that are going on. Um, but I don't, you know, I, I don't want to think, I don't want anybody to think that those things are not important. They are. But I do want to also uh, stress the fact that, and recognize the fact that there are many people who have suffered greatly over the past year. Uh, economically, we've suffered. Health-wise, we've suffered. Uh, so whatever we talk about this year and on this show, I do want to recognize any of you who have either experienced health issues uh, yourself, uh, any of you who have experienced uh, a job loss, uh, and has still yet to land on your feet. Um, you know, the, the best of luck to you uh, on that as well. Um, persevere and stay with it. And then, and then really most importantly, those, uh, those who have lost loved ones from the virus or really anything else, uh, any health problems or anything. Uh, that's really serious. And, um, you know, I don't want to be a downer here, but I do want to recognize and remember those who have lost their lives uh, because of the coronavirus or any other reason uh, over the course of 2020. So I, I really don't want to forget 2020 because I think 2020 is uh, something that we can, we can look at, we can measure, uh, we can measure things from 2020. We can look at ourselves, how we handled 2020. Uh, did it make us stronger? Uh, what did we learn? How can we do things differently? Uh, you know, whether you want to call it a New Year's resolution, I'm not big on New Year's resolutions because I think we should be doing things every day to improve ourselves and, and not just, you know, a resolution that we once a year. But uh, I, I don't want to forget 2020. And I think it's important that we remember it. Uh, we lost a lot of great people. Uh, you know, I know people lost family members. My parents, uh, who were in their 70s, both had COVID. They, they made it through. They're, they're recovering. So, you know, thank God for that. But I know there are a lot of families out there who have not had that same uh, experience and that same luck that we had. So uh, again, I don't want to forget it. And I think there are certain ways that maybe it can even make us better going forward. So, you know, wear the COVID masks, try to be, you know, you need to do what you, you know, you need to do what you're comfortable with. Uh, as long as it's within the parameters of the guidelines that we've been given, you know, been given as far as wearing masks in certain places and whatnot. But if you, you know, you feel the need to travel, travel. If you feel the need uh, go out to a restaurant as long as they're open and you can do that, then, then do it. But at the same token, if you're not comfortable doing that uh, and you feel the need to stay in and, you know, not go out and try to wait this thing out, then you need to do that too. I think that's one area that I don't, I think it's a challenge to be judgmental. Um, people have to do what they want to do, but within the parameters. So wear the masks, uh, sponsor, uh, mustny.com. And again, if, if you feel like you want to erase 2020, I'm not judging that at all. But uh, I, I do think that it's important to uh, remember it for uh, a lot of reasons. And hopefully it can uh, help improve us all going into 2021. And just, you know, when the, when the clock struck midnight uh, on January 1st, you know, these things are not going away. Um, you know, I hope there's not a perception out there that these things are going away. Just because the clock is 1201 doesn't mean that there's no more COVID. Doesn't mean that we don't have the same issues. Doesn't mean it might not get worse. Uh, so let's uh, let's all remember that. So I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I do think it's important to remember 2020 and um, go from there. So uh, a few things that I have I have some thoughts about before I get into talking about some of the upcoming shows. We'll, we'll keep this kind of short. Uh, again, you know, learned a lot from the podcast this year. Got some great feedback from people, and I always want to hear your feedback as well. I, you know, we're 45 years old. I'm 45 years old. I can handle uh, the critiques. I can handle the uh, constructive feedback. Uh, if you like the show, you, if you don't like the show, if you don't like the format, again, the gray hole wall behind me, we're going to try to decorate that a little bit so there's a little bit more energy maybe there. Um, so we're doing that. We have some great shows coming up. But there are a couple of things that I, I just need to uh, talk about. And, I really, and they're really more, they're more questions. I have my thoughts, but I really do want to engage with my with the listeners, right? Uh, and one of, uh, one of the things that I've noticed, I've seen it on social media and I've seen people on public, are men who wear... Superman T-shirts. Uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, have you seen these guys? They wear Superman T-shirts. The T-shirts are cool. Uh, I like them. I wouldn't personally wear one. I don't necessarily judge uh, anybody who does wear them. Um, I think it's a little odd for uh, a grown-up to be wearing a Superman shirt. Uh, I think it's a little self-indulgent, and I don't know what they're trying to say. Maybe they just love the superhero. Uh, they could just be as simple as that. But 
I find it a little strange, and I'm wondering what my listeners uh, think about men who wear uh, Superman t-shirts in public. You know, we've talked about this before about, you know, men who don't wear shirts in public. We've talked about wearing the shirt of your favorite band in public. I'm curious what your thoughts are on the Superman shirt and any other, you know, I've, there's, well, there's, there's uh, Captain America, there's Green Lantern. I've seen several of them. I, it's just fun. I understand it's probably just a fun thing, but I'm wondering what you think about that. I asked some of my buddies about that. They were kind of uh, against it. Um, again, I'm not shaming anybody for doing it, if that's, if that's what they want to do, but I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on uh, the Superman t-shirts. I find it a little odd. I, I'm not doing it, but again, I'm not, I'm not necessarily judging it. would love to know your thoughts. The other thing that, that sort of shocks me in 2020, and this will happen in 2021 and, and beyond, and it's, it's happened historically, but I, I find that it's even a little bit more prevalent with social media, is that everybody these days has a camera and their phone, right? And there are all of these, you know, we see all of these recordings of, you know, uh, Karens, right? They call them Karens that are, you know, yelling at somebody, they, people going on these racist rants, people doing things in front of the camera that uh, are just honestly embarrassing. And I, I don't, I guess the, the whole topic here, it's not just about social media. But I just, I don't understand how people think that they're going to get away with certain things. Anymore. And especially now, where there's so much technology out there. There are cameras everywhere. I mean, security cameras. Again, there are people with phones. And I don't know if it's, if it's ignorance, if it's stupidity, uh, if, it's, if it's arrogance. Um, but you just, I, I can't understand why people think they're getting away with certain things. And, and I do have a couple of examples. Uh, I do have a couple of examples of this. I want to go back. There was just a, an incident. It was in the news. It wasn't a huge story, but there was a woman from California who was in New York City. She was in Soho, and she had lost her her uh, iPhone. And she was in the lobby of a, of a hotel, and she uh, she accused a fourteen year old uh, African American kid uh, of stealing the phone, and she went after him. I mean, she physically went after this kid and later found out that it was not the kid that had the phone. She had actually uh, dropped it in an Uber, the Uber driver brought it back. And you know, you, you see a lot of these kind of stories and she, they, they ended up, I think they ended up arresting her. She was out in California. She's had incidents like this before. She was 23, I think. She said she, in the video that she was in, she said she was Latina. What, I don't really care whether she was, uh, I don't care what, what, what her background was. My point is that I don't understand that, that, that anybody, and I know there are, not, there are a lot of irrational people in the world. I understand that. But if you're in the lobby of a hotel in New York City and you attack anybody that you're not going, that you feel like you're not going to get caught, or maybe, or maybe you just don't care. And I feel like there's, a, there's, there's, there's more and more of these brazen actions from people that they either think they're not going to get caught or they just don't care. I don't, and I don't actually even know which one is worse. Which one is worse, that they don't care or that they're just so stupid that they don't realize they're going to get caught? So she got caught. I think she's getting arrested. Good. I'm glad. She obviously, it, it was obviously a racial, uh, racial profiling thing. And it was, it was disturbing to see it. She, I mean, she attacked this kid for no reason. 14 years old, he was playing, he was actually playing um, a trumpet or something uh, in the lobby. And she goes and she attacks this poor, this poor kid. Uh, horrible story. And I feel like we're getting more and more of this. And, and it's not just, and it's, 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 it's the public, right? It's the common public, people, normal people like, like, like us. But I really don't understand it when it's celebrities that do this. And you, I'm sure you, if, you, if you're into pop culture like I am, I love pop culture. That's fascinating. You know, we've done some shows. We had Aaron Brown on the show, uh, posted on the red carpet. We had her uh, on a few, few months back, right? And it, it's worse when it's a celebrity because the celebrity is under the microscope. So you know that you're being watched probably every moment whether it's fair or not fair you're being watched and this whole story with hilaria baldwin right pretending that she was uh spanish uh, excuse me not hilaria hillary if you don't know the story check i mean it's it's all over the news right now I'm sure you probably heard it if you haven't google it i'm not going to get into it so much here but you know hilaria baldwin with alec baldwin's wife they have kids together um, has portrayed this image of being Spanish. She, she has spoken Spanish. She has portrayed this lifestyle of being from Spain. Uh, 
uh, she's, uh, she was on a talk show having, having a tough time pronouncing the word cucumber and other, uh, other English words. And she's fully American. She was born in Massachusetts, went to a private school there. Uh, and, you know, her, I think her family now lives in Spain, which is great. You can love the culture. But don't play off the fact that you're a, a different background, a different ethnic background than what you are. And again, it's just it's just arrogance that you feel like I can say these kind of things and it'll never come out that I'm not telling the truth. She wasn't telling the truth. She got busted. Uh, I think it was on social media. She got called out. And now she's being and, and rightfully so. Um, She's, being, she's all over the internet. People are, are, are bashing her, and she needs to be held accountable for that. You know, you, you can't just go around doing that, especially when you're in the limelight like that. Uh, Alec Baldwin has stood by her. I like Alec Baldwin. I know he's, a, he's, a, he's cantankerous and, and often, you know, very, uh, uh, he's a volatile guy. We know that. Uh, but he's standing by her at this point and said that he didn't know. I mean, how can you, if, if you think about this, I know people have secret lives. I understand that. But if you have a significant other right now, or a husband or a wife, I understand there might be some things that you don't know about their history. I get that. But you probably know their background, where they grew up, where they went to school, who they hung out with, and certainly what their ethnic background is. So I have a very hard time believing that Alec Baldwin did not know this. Anyway, Again, I, 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 I always wonder with, with people, again, celebrity, not celebrity, is it, is it stupidity, is it ignorance, is it arrogance? And of those three things, I don't know which one is worse. So um, those are a couple of things that have been on my mind lately. And um, anyway, I want to get to some of the shows that we have. I want to, because I, I don't want to uh, keep this one too long because we have some great guests uh, coming up and some great topics. And in just a second, I'm going to announce our first guest. But a few of the shows... Uh, that you can expect to see this coming year. Uh, we have uh, a show on uh, body art. We're going to do a show on tattoos. And one of the things that I want to make sure, because I've talked about these shows quite a bit in the past, when I set out to do the Ion Life podcast, and uh, again, you can find us ionlifepodcast.com. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you can uh, download us on uh, Spotify, Apple. Go to the website. You can, but however you want to digest it. Up to you. Um, but we, we've talked about a lot of shows that we're going to cover. And we've only been doing this for about five or six months now. Um, but I sat down with you know, myself my, and friends, people were close to me, and we talked about different topics for the show and wrote down you know, probably about 50 or 60 topics. And the great thing, and this is what I'm talking about earlier about the content of the show. The great thing is that we've had so many ideas, so many great ideas from people that we haven't even gotten to the through uh, a quarter of the list um, that we put together at the beginning. So uh, there, there are several shows that I'm, I, I, topics that I'm, I'm fascinated by. And if you know anyone who would be a good guest for these, there's some of them I'm still working on, some of them I have guests, but we're gonna talk about body art and tattoos. I'm fascinated by them. I pierced my, uh, I pierced my ear, my left ear in college. Uh, that was about the extent of, of my piercings. Um, I don't have any tattoos, but I'm fascinated by them. A lot of them have meaning. Uh, I find that people get very passionate one way or the other about tattoos. They either love them or they hate them. There's not a lot of them in between. I want to get somebody on here with body piercings, uh, with uh, body art, tattoos, find out what the meaning is. They're great conversation stars. You meet somebody in a bar, you talk about tattoos, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and that's really what the I Don't Like Podcast is all about, the kind of conversations that you would have in a bar, at a coffee shop, whatever your drink of choice might be. Uh, so body art, tattoos. Uh, another one, uh, we're going to do a full show on pet peeves. Uh, if you've watched the show before, I had three of my – Closest friends from, well, they, they, we, from, they are from high school, but I've known them a lot longer than that. Uh, we did a high school reunion show. We are going to uh, bring those guys back on and uh, talk about all of our pet peeves. You know, you know, you sit around with your friends and we talk about pet peeves. We're going to bring those guys on. They have a lot. I have a lot. We're like grumpy old men in our mid-40s, right? We're going to talk about uh, pet peeves. Uh, we're going to get Chris to wear his, uh, my friend Chris from high school, to sponsor the show, Must NY. Uh, hopefully he'll wear his, uh, his, uh, Red Hooded Sweatshirt again. That's been a big part of the show. Um, and he said that he's actually going to send me a Red Hooded Sweatshirt with some form of writing on it. I don't know what it's going to say. I will wear it. I told him I committed to wearing it. I will. We're going to have fun on the show. I mean, the, the show is about fun and not taking yourself too seriously. If you have something you want me to wear that's appropriate, I will wear it. Send it to me. 
uh, I have a PO box, uh, you know, uh, email me and I'll, and I'll give it to you. I'll, I'll wear, you know, I'll wear it for you. Uh, it, I'm really not worried about that. Um, I will not go sure. That's not good for anyone. We'll talk about that. Uh, we also are going to shift a little bit in some of our shows. We're going to do some business shows. Um, as many of you know, I do have my own business called The Boyer Group. It's uh, The Boyer Group LLC.com. I do marketing and business consulting. Uh, I had to get a little plug there. I haven't really talked about that too much. I try to keep them a little bit separate, but we're going to talk about some business. Uh, we're going to talk about business shows, but not so much the business side of things, but more of the life side of business. You know, uh, a lot of the day that we, a lot of the day um, in our lives, we spend talking about work, right? We go home, we talk about work. Uh, we try to separate ourselves from work. Sometimes it's not always easy, but um, there is a life behind work, behind the leaders of organizations. And we are going to kind of talk about the lives of people, um, leaders, uh, employees, businesses, uh, that kind of thing. So we'll have shows like that on as well. We'll have some business people talking about how they live lives outside of the office. I think that'll be uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm also very excited. And uh, again, those of you who, who watch the show uh, know that we talk a lot about Nickelback, the band Nickelback. And we are going to do a full show on Nickelback. We've talked about the hatred of Nickelback. We've talked about it's either love or hate. People either love them or hate them. They're the Canadian band. Uh, this is how you remind me. That's one of their hit songs. They have a lot of great songs. Chad Kroger, you know, they're like the cheesy kind of rock stars. They're, they're, they're a great band. We talk about them a lot. And, you know, people probably wonder why I talk about them. Do I love them that much? It's not that I love them that much. I just never understood uh, the hatred of the band. And, and there, if you Google, you can see there are people that actually hate Nickelback. They've been the butt of so many jokes. I don't like it. It bothers me. And, and, and I don't know why. I have, a, I have somebody from the fan club, from one of the fan clubs, an international fan club. I'm not going to go into it yet, but from the international fan club who's going to come on uh, and, and talk about the love of Nickelback. And we're, we're going to bring somebody else on to also talk about um, maybe, uh, maybe some of the Nickelback hatred, why that takes place. So that will be a fun show. We'll do a show on Charlie Sheehan uh, this year. You know, I'm a big fan of Charlie Sheehan. If you, if you listen to the show, you know that. We do a lot of that as well. Um, so there's a lot more. Uh, conspiracy theories, we will do a show on that. Uh, some of the conspiracy theories are legit out there. And some of them are just so ridiculous and just show such uh, ignorance and cluelessness. I, I can't even, I mean, there are people that think that COVID is, is a hoax. I mean. Yeah, come on. I, I, I try to respect people's opinions, but I don't respect that opinion at all. That's just stupidity. And it's just a, a complete lack of awareness or reality. Um, but we're going to bring someone on to talk about conspiracy theories, legit ones, um, non-legit ones. But I'm fascinated by the conspiracy theories. I'm fascinated that people don't really look at facts sometimes. But there are some conspiracy theories that actually seem realistic. I want to talk about some of the realistic ones as, as well. Um, you know, sometimes conspiracy theories can be very harmful, but sometimes the discussion of them can be helpful maybe to dig into some of the, uh, find some of the facts or lack thereof by, you know, of some of those conspiracy theories. So, uh, I don't think we'll have Alex Jones on here. That guy's out of his mind. I'd love to have him on if he, you know, if he, if he wants to come on and talk. Uh, would love to have Alex Jones on, but uh, it'll probably be a little bit more low-key than, than Alex Jones. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, so I want to announce, uh, uh, we're going to conclude here again. I uh, try to keep the show a little bit shorter. I know that it probably seems like I, I love to hear myself talk. I really don't. I have a lot to say. That's why I don't do this podcast solo because I don't want people to just have to listen to me. I always feel like when I have these solo shows, I have to apologize uh, that you have to look and listen to me for, you know, 20 minutes to half an hour. But uh, I want to announce, and this is actually a pet peeve, and I'm, I'm really excited to announce uh, that on next week's show, uh, we will have nationally renowned Agent Sebastian from the Cartnarks, who is a YouTube, Facebook, social media sensation. And if you're not familiar with Cartnarks, look it up. It's C-A-R-T-N-A-R-C-S, Cartnarks. And I'm gonna, I, I will be, over the next week, you'll be seeing a lot of footage on my social media channels. Agent Sebastian is almost a vigilante. Uh, he, and I, I won't go into it too much, but he basically goes around to shopping uh, centers, uh, strip malls. He's outside and he publicly shames people when they don't bring their cart back to the cart return. Uh, and he has a whole thing that he does. He, he you know, and, and it's, it's great. He's very nice about it. Uh, he, he's, he's so nice, which actually I think makes the people who he targets even angrier. Um, but he is here to keep the carts out of the parking lot so they don't hit our cars 
so they don't block our cars. And there's a lot of, you're going to have an opinion about this little guy one way or the other. You're either going to love him or hate him. I love him. I think it's great. It is one of my pet peeves. I can't stand it when people don't bring their carts back. Uh, you know, I, I go and pull, pull into a parking spot and there's a cart there. Or I see a dent on my car because somebody was too lazy. They, they didn't bring their cart back. So Agent Sebastian, who is the cart narc, it's cart narc, but I think it's just him. Uh, Agent Sebastian, who uh, is uh, it's vigilante justice, uh, nonviolent vigilante justice, would be on the show talking about his experiences in parking lots. He's based out in LA. He's in parking lots all over California, Nevada. He's been in Florida. Uh, he always been up in Oregon. So we're going to talk to him about uh, why he's doing this, uh, what some of his experiences are. He's, he's faced death threats. He's had people uh, have, have threatened to call the police on him, and yet he perseveres. He makes sure that our parking lots are clear. I'd love to get him here in Connecticut and see how they react here. Uh, anyway, uh, Agent Sebastian Cartnarx will be our first guest. And uh, I'm really excited to have him on. He's a great guy. Uh, he's hilarious. Uh, he does some radio work with iHeartMedia as well. We'll talk to him about that, his background. Agent Sebastian uh, on the Cartnarx. And if you don't, again, if you have a chance, go check it out. You'll, you'll, you'll crack up. Uh, you'll wonder why he's probably even starting with people. But uh, I think I'm glad he's doing it because if, if these people can't take back uh, their, uh, their carts. And yes, you'll see, we will talk to him about this, but he leaves people with kids alone and uh, obviously older people, he leaves them alone as well because some people, you know, it, it's a challenge for them. To take their carts back. If, you're, if you're young and vibrant, take your cart back and you're going to find out why he does this uh, on the next episode of the Eye on Life podcast. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for indulging me in the show today. Again, I want to thank all of you for listening. Happy New Year 2021. Happy, healthy success to all of you and your families and your friends and all the people who care uh, about you and who you care about. Uh, and in the meantime, I look forward to seeing you next week with uh, Cardinarch's Agent Sebastian. In the meantime, as always, keep an eye on life.